Welcome to Eric Funk's Vintage Sportsman. Hello, welcome to Eric Funk's Vintage Sportsman. Today we're going to be talking about blinds and still hunting in the woods of northern New Jersey. So stay tuned and come on along, it's going to be fun. Alright folks, I'm going to pan around and show you what I have here. I got my trusty clippers, my trusty saw, and I'm in another patch of hemlock. And these hemlock patches, they're real nice and thick, and they are just, like I had the other blind down there, it's just the perfect cover. I mean, no need to go out and spend hundreds of dollars for these fancy blinds and pop-up blinds. And Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just I like hunting this way. I mean, this, this way is a lot of fun. You don't have a heater with you, but... That's what you're hunting. You're not supposed to use a heater. But I know you guys listen. Someday I'll end up using a heater when I get too old for this stuff. But, um, but yeah, we're going to take our clippers. And I'm going to clip all along this tree so I can lean my back against something. Because that being comfortable is the most important thing. So uh, we're going to get to cutting. And see, folks, this is my view. I'm going to have to trim a little bit to make room for the arrow to slide through. But... You look through here, this is just solid. I mean, there's no shots back here, obviously, but I want the deer to come, usually come from lower hills. And they'll be on all that heavy cover and I'll be able to see them before they see me. So I can see with those little holes, see the deer coming. Now they don't always come the way you want them to, but generally that's the direction they've been moving. But with that, a little bit of camouflage netting that I have, I can adapt to deer movement patterns as I see them. So this is what we have. It's awesome. Now folks, this deer blind isn't far from my other blind. But what I'm trying to avoid is the deer patterning me because I shot a deer out of that blind already. And I spooked a bunch of deer. So they may just start to avoid going near the blind or near the, the hemlocks there because they know something's up. So you try to be mobile a little bit, have multiple blind sights. This way you can kind of always be moving around, and plus the wind direction too. You want to have one that are in different areas for different wind settings, you know, whatever the wind is doing that day. So that's a tip, man, you young hunters out there. Multiple blinds, and you can always jump from blind to blind. You don't have to blow the hunt just because your blind is the wrong wind that day. So it's awesome, man. Here's what that blind looks like to the deer. Now this is really open right here which I eventually may have to brush some of that in for an entrance. But I expect the deer to be coming from downhill to uphill. So this, this here is what the deer are going to see. That's all the deer are going to see. It's pretty solid. If the deer come from low in the morning, they hide down in the lower ridges and when they come up to feed they'll work their way up these ridges and before they even get to that open area that's when I want to get an arrow in them so this is it man awesome another great advantage folks is look at this tall grass and these pines here I mean you talk about an area to set up an ambush on deer or to still hunt for them in that grass real easy you may jump a bedded buck or dough and you know you just you make your way through nice and easy or you can just sit and you'll find there you can see their trails easy through the grasses so I mean this, this is just perfect I mean you can't beat this so that's another thing you can do uh, hunting on foot and being mobile is, is, is something that that uh, you can do as a bow hunter it doesn't always mean you have to have a tree stand you don't have to you don't always have to do what um, traditionally is the normal you know it's productive but I have a little fun with it though too so uh, yeah we'll show you what our terrain looks like I'll scan it show you what we're looking at here you look at that terrain there you're talking all this thick heavy grass the guys growing up like I did in the 70s and the 80s we had these fire roads all over in the mountains 
and they were perfect spots to stalk for deer. Now sometimes you can go up there with a leaf blower and blow leaves off there which makes it nice and quiet walking and especially where there's a lot of activity four wheelers and things like that the deer are used to activity so you know a leaf blower and just keep the trails open and you could sneak along the edges of these trails and catch deer movement it's been a very I, I used it when I was a kid I snuck up on many a deer that way and uh, it's nice quiet walking and you can really get some views good for gun hunters great for gun hunters bow and arrow you know, with the recurve that I use on relatively short range, but, you know, modern compounds, you guys that shoot the modern compounds really well, I mean, it's a, just a deadly, deadly technique, and, um, you know, we have them all over, so uh, that's that's another way to get them. It, it is awesome, man, just walk, especially on a rainy day. Rainy days, be in the woods. You will sneak up on more deer on rainy days. It's just, it's just an awesome time to be in the woods. And that fire road just goes right down. You just walk along these fire roads. You know, we're legal, of course. Make sure, you know, the laws, you know, allow you to. Um, you know, if you're hunting on them. Or if you're just stalking just to get pictures of deer. You know, just always check your laws to make sure you're doing the right thing. And I did this back in the 70s and the 80s. I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, but it's, uh, I remember it when I was a kid. It worked really well. Here's more examples of using the terrain to your advantage up in these hills. Now the ordinary person might just see a bunch of trees. I see a million hiding spots for a white-tailed deer hunter. I mean, if you got deer, depending on the deer movement obviously, but if you can get tucked away up in there, a place like that, you got pines, you got ridges, I mean, there's all kinds of hiding spots up here, you know, depending on your deer movement patterns, obviously, but, but just blend into that landscape. You know, you don't need the expensive stuff. You just need to use Mother Nature. I mean, look at the terrain, how it slopes down. You're at an elevated area, and, you know, you just, depending on your, how your deer move, obviously, but you just use Mother Nature to your advantage. She's provides everything that you need. She always does. She always will. Like I said before, check your local game laws where you're hunting. I mean, if you're on private land, you have your own fire roads. Um, obviously, if they're hiking trails, you have to be aware of that, what the laws say, um, you know, where the land is and different things. But where this applies, and you're legal to do so, I mean, you, you will stalk these fire roads to stick to all these edges. You know, you, you try to make yourself, you don't want to stand in the center of the fire road, just walk down. You know, you just stay along the edge with the cover. And you know, you just you sneak along and you move slow. And the slower you move, you want to spend most of your time watching and, and more watching than you actually do moving. And you'll find, you know, it's slow and tedious, but Sometimes it beats sitting in a blind for hours and hours. But, uh, you know, you just hit that edges. You know, you see all that edge cover down there. And you just slide along those edges. And, uh, you know, that's, you'll be able to just sneak down. And sometimes that's more productive for deer, especially rainy days. Rainy days are the best. They are the ticket, man. They are the ticket. All right, what we're gonna show you next in still hunting is called woods walk. Fred Asbell has a great book on stalking and still hunting, which is just so informative. And it shows you how you could walk in the woods when it's impossible not to make noise and sound just like a deer walking. Now, you have to remember, deer within a group of deer, when they're walking, every time they hear a leaf rustle, it, it would be impossible for a deer to react to every single sound in the woods. They'd be paranoid. They're paranoid already, but you know, there's sounds that are natural to them that they can ignore and sounds that signal alarm. So you have to kind of put yourself in a deer's perspective because there's anybody who knows who sits in the woods for a long time knows there are a million sounds going on. Squirrels running, crashing through, making noise, and deer don't seem to be bothered by it because they know it's a natural sound. They know what sound squirrels make and they know what sound man makes. So you got to differentiate between the sounds. So this woods walking technique, you'll see, you sound just like another deer walking. You know, they'll, 
may you know look up and be alerted but at the same point you'll sound more like them a four-legged animal walking so now check it out it's pretty interesting Folks, we're going to do some horn rattling today. It's a uh, early November, and hopefully these bucks. I got a doe already, so I'm hoping one of these bucks will come in. I got a buck tag, so stay tuned. whatsoever. I didn't even hear anything, so it's been a beautiful night, though. It's been nice. Well, that's all for Eric Funk's Finchard Sportsman this episode. I just want to say if you get a chance, introduce a kid to the outdoors or take a kid hunting or fishing or trapping. Uh, there was a guy who did that for me. Many people done that for me and gave me magazines and just in, um, in books and, and took me into the outdoors so hopefully it will inspire the next generation. Mm -hmm.